<laughs> yes. Welcome back to Sister Ooh. Circle Live. We are proud to say that Black History lives here, not just during the month of February, but all year long. So we decided that in honoring our past, we wanted to examine our present mm -hmm. and discuss ways to make a difference in the future. I love that. In our Bridging the Gap series, we're exploring different aspects of the Black experience. And on the eve of Valentine's Day, we want to celebrate the force that's all that's at the heart of our community, and that's love. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we invited Montel Jordan, his wife Kristen, and Tawanda Braxton and her partner Sean Hall to talk about their black love and what it means and what black love means to them. We are so excited to be talking about black love yes. with Montel Jordan and his lovely wife Kristen, yeah. also Tawanda yeah. Braxton and her partner Sean Hall. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah. so let's kick things off. How did you all fall? I want to hear the love, love story. What's the love what story? What are the love stories? Mm. There's this, there's this long. You know yeah, it is long. They go long. first. But you know what's funny? It's always kind of it's a different variation yes. per person. Yes. Yeah. Yes. On right. how you guys met, right? Well, yes. there's, there's her story, and then there's the truth. Exactly. Oh. So, you know, this now this black love. You already know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but the, the short version of it is that we met. Uh, at a place neither of us was supposed to be at uh, during college years. It was a, a sorority, fraternity ball, a place that neither of us were in that fraternity or sorority. Mm -hmm. And I saw her as she was walking up and from outside and she was six foot tall and had on four inch heels. And yes. so I looked and I was like, oh my Come God, you right. know, that could be my wife right there. Right. Right. So that's how we met. And then she came in and then ignored me. And then there was just no love and no attention. Or <laughs> there was no, no black anything. love of any kind. There was no black love. <laughs> you know, but time. how long did it take for you guys to actually connect on that level? Like, so the crazy part, so it was his crazy dancing that sucked me in, but kind of not at uh -huh. the same time. Uh -huh. yeah. So if you can see all of his six, eight grandeur doing the running man, oh, you can wow. picture that, won't you? Yeah. And then what happens is, yeah. is that everybody's eyes turn and you go, mm -hmm. Let's talk. Uh, yeah. 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 So it was the let's talk and then uh, yeah. I got yeah. the number. Right, okay. right. Well, how long have you been together now? 25 years. Wow. Two, together. Yes. Yeah. Together. Yeah. 25 yeah. together. That's great. Yeah. Now I got to get into Tawanda. And Sean. And Sean. Mm. <laughs> now, how did you guys come to meet, and when did that black love transpire for the two Well, tribute? I wasn't doing the running man. You were not doing that. I was not doing that. Were you doing a Carlton? Uh, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we, uh, we met over, I don't know what, uh, 29, 30 years yes. ago. Really? Um, uh -huh. Yeah, we met in a, a studio in Glendale. Um, her and her sister were doing uh, their uh, Braxton's group together. Mm -hmm. They had not signed to LaFace yet, but they're on their way to. Right. So we were doing music on them. And then we kind of like connected. We didn't connect, connect. Right. right. We didn't know each other biblically. Right. right. But we liked each other. Okay. Yeah, a lot. A like lot. it was like serious, you know. So yeah. we, um, we lost contact for a bunch of years. And then I tried to uh, hit her up on Instagram. So I'm. Hmm. That ain't yeah. how it happens, Frank. No, uh, no. That's not how it happens. I don't no. believe. No, no, no. no. We debate. We go that. back and forth because I was hitting no. her up. I was like, "It's me. What's up?" Blah blah blah. And then she just not, because I didn't, you know. Now the, you know the receipts are in the DM. In the DM. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to get her to go back, but she won't do it. This is for everyone here. What do you okay. think makes a good partner? Mm. What characteristics make a good partner? Wow. I'll tell you, one of the things for me that we've learned over time that he is phenomenal at is being selfless. Mm -hmm. Meaning, like, he is mm -hmm. so s serving of his family, mm -hmm. of his children, of me, and he always puts us first. Wow. Thank you, Beth. That's good. Yeah, that's I, I, amazing. I think when you say selfless, um, I think that being selfless isn't thinking less of yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's thinking of yourself. Yes. Less. And so yeah. for us, just in regard to the, the question about, about marriage, um, it, um, I think what we believe and what we've subscribed to is that uh, end goal for us is we want our relationship to model as close as it can uh, what God is, Father, Son, Holy Spirit as pastors, mm -hmm. what, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And so from that standpoint, uh, it's not so much even for us happiness, but it's more joy. And the reason why we call it joy is because joy is something from the inside yes. that comes out. And a lot, it, it can be that happiness sometimes is what's happening on the outside affecting how we are on the inside. So right. we might not have a life that's completely all the time full of happiness, yeah. but joy is something that we always have. So that when tragedy comes, when trial comes, yeah. that we're moving from what's on the inside to come out to be able to get us to what we think the end goal is that ultimately uh, he that finds a wife finds a good thing yeah. mm -hmm. and obtains the favor of the Lord because me before I was married uh, I had favor mm -hmm. in my life I was excellent in a lot of different things 
but I still didn't have the favor of the Lord on me until I came into that particular covenant, that particular agreement that allowed me to walk in a different type of favor. Beautiful. You know, I, I, I love that there's two different dynamics yes. here. Yes. But yeah. what I feel that is most common in the in the dynamic is love. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's what I can really appreciate. Yeah. But when we look at the black community and with us seeing so many baby mamas mm. and you know and, and, and that's kind of become the narrative. Mm -hmm. Right. What can we do to change that? I think oh, it has a lot oh, to do with great. parenting. Mm. Um, I, Sean and I was discussing this actually the other day about how not allowing your children to see a revolving door. If you see, sometimes they, they kind of pattern their lives with their parents. So if you see your parents having a revolving door, having a whole bunch of men coming in, have a whole bunch of women coming in, they're gonna say, okay, that's good, I can do this. But if, as a parent, if you say, okay, you're not gonna have women coming in and out of this house like this. You're gonna, you have to have some rules and, and boundaries. I think that's where it has to begin. Yeah. Me. Right. And if I can just chime in, I, I love what you guys said in regard to even if not being married, that you're open, like if it happens down the road or yeah. whatever that, I, I'll do the ceremony. I'll tell you right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, but, but here's, here's why I say that. I Absolutely. say that because we have an opportunity that we, we model what it is that we want to reproduce. Mm -hmm. So when you ask the question about how can we uh, change, to, to change, the purvey, <laughs> change the narrative, mm -hmm. of the baby if the mama. narrative is, it's okay for you just to love the person that you would and be happy, and you don't have to have, uh, you know, as long as you, you can live together, but you don't have to be married. You can, you know, you can stay together, but you don't have to to be fully into the covenant. You know, when we when we do that, what we're basically saying is it's okay for you to be able to do what you do to make makes you happy. And all the times, what makes us happy is not all the time that what makes God happy. Mm -hmm. And that's just a that's a reality. And it's mm -hmm. not a you know it's a hard thing maybe to be able to hear, but mm -hmm. I think. What it is is that my children, my grandchildren, mm. I believe with everything within me, they will never know what divorce is. Mm. And that's not a negative thing against anybody that's had an experience of divorce. Right. I'm saying that what we're modeling, our kids don't know what it is to spend time with mommy half the time and with daddy mm -hmm. half the time because mm -hmm. when we had the opportunity for you to take half, God says, why don't you stay and take it all? Amen. You know, And so that's wow. just something that if you wanna try and change the narrative, I think part of the narrative is you don't have to do this, but God gives a safety place for us to be able to say it can be done and it can still be fly and y'all can be good together. You right. can spend a lifetime together. You can still have sex together. You can make it dope together and it doesn't have to be what people right. think marriage is right. because you're creating the new narrative of what marriage can look wow. like and what it can be. To so keep those baby mama numbers down. <laughs> oh, oh, baby oh, <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> yes, and on that note, part two of Bridging the Gap Black Love is up next, so stay with us. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We are continuing our conversation about black love with Montel Jordan and his wife Kristen, and also Tawanda Braxton and Sean Hall. Okay, Tawanda, uh -oh. what does it mean to love a black man? You know, for me, it means to love him mercifully. Mm. And, you know, I'm, of course, everybody knows that I was married before. And I, when I was... <laughs> she gets I'm, just <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And in that marriage, you know, I knew that I wasn't supposed to be there. You know, I was very disobedient. And um, fortunately, what I did was when I met Sean, I decided not to carry what I had with my ex-husband onto what I have now. So um, he pushes me to, well, he helps, he holds my hand. He leads me to communicate because I've not been a great communicator okay. in the past. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, it, it's, he makes it easy to love him. Mm -hmm. And then he loves the children as if they're his own and that makes it special too. Yes, and that's, a, I know we're gonna get to your version of that question, but mm -hmm. how has that been for you, Sean, that you don't have any biological kids, but yeah. you, are, you, you love. You now have a blended family. family. You have a blended mm -hmm. family with Tawanda and loving her babies as your own. Man, it's so crazy. It's been a, it's been a journey. Um, before we actually I met the kids, I was actually kind of co-parenting through her. So, because we talk every time, so she's like, well, this happened in school. I'm like, well, did you consider this perspe perspective or maybe that we should go this way, blah, blah, blah. So it kind of it kind of morphed into, so when, when I actually got to meet them and spend time with them, um, I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is what, you know what I'm saying, I've been kind of dealing with from afar. Because it took, it took time, you know, we, 
we were making sure we were good first before we actually brought the kids yeah, into it. You sure. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I didn't want her, you know, and then back and forth and creating these relationships and then leaving their life. I didn't want to do that. Um, but it's uh, it's it's been it's it's an adjustment every day. What do you all think is the greatest misconception of each of you? If you were to say that about Tawanda and you about your wife Kristen. I'll let, let y'all go first. Biggest, <laughs> biggest misconception. Yes. Yeah. It costs everything. Yeah. But you gain everything yeah. by being willing to give everything. And so in that, I think that's the biggest misconception that people think they can get an everything marriage, an everything relationship, but only give 50%. Mm -hmm. You know, I bring my 50%, you bring your 50%, that's 100. No, but if I'm not, bringing 50, you bring in 50, that means I'm not a whole person mm -hmm. and you're not a whole person and we need each other to be whole. But I'm bringing my 100, to, I'm actually bringing 110 to the table to try and meet her 100, 110. So now you're functioning on two, 210, 220 right, yeah. right. from that standpoint. That's yeah. good. I think a big misconception is, is that he completes me or that I complete him. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, is that I have to be whole. He has to be whole in order for us to be whole. And the only way we can be whole is this. Mm -hmm. And so I think the misconception sometimes is that we complete each other when we have to be two complete individuals. God completes us yeah. and then we can come together with that. Yes. It's good. I want you to go first. All right. <laughs> I, I was sitting here thinking while he was talking, I was like, misconception? I really don't listen to people outside of our relationships. I don't even know how they see us. I only just kind of get like, oh, y'all are cool, y'all are this, y'all are that. But I think, I think probably one misconception might be that that people that don't understand this lifestyle as far as like being creative or being like on reality TV, stuff like that, they don't understand the inside of it. Like, I don't see any of that. I see Tawanda, mm -hmm. I see the kids. So like, I don't factor in what goes on around us. These are jobs, these are passions, these are things that we're doing. But at the base of it all, after all that's over with, this is who I'm with. You know what I'm saying? As a person, if we worked at FedEx or we worked at, you know, she did hair or whatever it is, it's this. We think about what's going on in the world. People are trying to get together and women and men have a list mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that list and when should we throw the list away or mark or some things off? Or should we have a list? So here's my take on <laughs> it. Like, I believe you should have a list, but not in the same context maybe of like, these are the things that I want. Not necessarily um, I'm looking for this man mm -hmm. to have. It's that, okay, God, this is what I want in a man. Sure. I want him to be the head of my house. I want him to um, be a man of God. I want him to treat me with respect. Mm -hmm. I want him to be faithful. I want him to be a wonderful husband as well as a wonderful father. Like, these are things, you know what I mean? And for me, when I made that list, um, it, it was after the fact, okay? Mm -hmm. But what I'll tell you is, is that he can give you scripture so that he can become that. So even if this is somebody that you've married, right? And then you have that list. God can make that list actually come to pass because mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. what you see before you isn't actually all the potential that's in him, mm -hmm. but you can speak it into existence. Right. Yes. Well, I just think that it's important for our community to have uh, stable relationships to say, okay, you know how sometimes we like it, we look at Will and Jaden like, okay, that's relationship goals. We look at Mr. and Mrs. Jordan be like, oh, that's relationship goals. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that it's important for everyone to see different aspects of different relationships to say, I want that, or I would like that. I want to work towards that. I think that's important. Yeah. Yes. A lot of times I think black love is super important because we need to be able to see model before us the different types of black love, what it looks like, what it entails, because it's what we've been shown. Mm -hmm, right. right. This is something that we haven't seen enough of. In one word, what does it mean to love a black woman? Openness. Montel? Legacy. Mm -hmm. And that, sister circle, is black love. <laughs> Yes. 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 Awesome. Thanks again, Montel, Kristen, and uh, Kristen Jordan, and uh, Tawanda Braxton, and Sean Hall for your courage, vulnerability, mm -hmm. and sharing your beautiful love stories with us. There were so many other things that we wanted to discuss, but mm -hmm. simply we just didn't have time. But we'll have another Black Love conversation in the very near future. So send us some mm -hmm. questions or topics you think we should address at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. And